Hey there boys and girls, fellow mechanics, um, YouTubers. Got this motor back in the shop. It has less than a year on it. And it came back from a motor rebuild shop and uh, I'm going to rebearing it myself this time. And the big problem that we have here is over greasing. And yes, you can over grease a bearing. It's got a funky smell in the grease. And you can see right here that there is signs of drying and caking. Yeah, this has all gone hard. And what that is from is over greasing. And it's burnt. It smells burnt, it looks burnt, and it is burnt. And the front bearing's out of this motor, so I'm doing both bearings. So, uh, I did the back one already. I've got it done. So there's the back bearing. And I'll do the front bearing and I'll show you. I wasn't going to make a video, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a video and show you guys what's going on. So I'm going to use a two jaw puller. Sorry, I got grease on my phone. Two jaw puller to pull this, and this is the one I'm using right here. Pro Point from Princess Auto. You guys are Canadian. It is a good puller. I love it. Keep my pressure screw lubricated and it does an amazing job. I don't have a tripod here to do this, but what I'm gonna do is take this, pull this bearing off, and I'll show you that I got the bearing off. Stand by. All right, there we got the, the puller set up. I'll try and do this one hand and uh, see if we can get this to work. I'll give it a shot for you. Bearing off. You see the nice bright blue? Or light blue? And then you see how it's black? That's burnt. And this was a 2RS bearing, which is fine to use in a motor. They took the one seal out. I normally don't like RS uh, radio sealed motors or bearings in motors because they do generate heat from the friction off the lip. Uh, it may have been a contributing factor to the over greasing, but this back chamber was packed solid, so I kind of doubt it. Uh, I'm going to get this uh, the new bearing in the induction bar, and then we'll uh, we'll see you in a second. All right, for comparison, here's your shielded bearing. That's your sealed bearing. The shield is only a dirt seal or a shield for um, bigger stuff just protects the bearing. It's non-contact, okay? That means this does not touch the inner race and the seal bearing is contact. Like I can't, you know, and one's missing and it doesn't spin freely, sorry. So this is the one that's going on. I'm gonna pick one seal out, or one shield out, sorry, and the shield will go to the grease side. And then uh, we'll get this all put back together. So this guy's going in the induction heater after I pick the seal out. To get the seal, the shield out, sorry I keep screwing that up. To get the shield out I just put a screwdriver in here, a small screwdriver, and pop this metal piece out. They come out quite easily. And that's what you end up with when you rip them out. And uh, I'll do that one too and get it ready to go in the motor. There is our bearing with the shield removed. That's going into the induction bar. Uh, this is quite the gizmo and quite expensive. That's what it is there. This is an induction bar, induction bearing heater. 
Alrighty. If you got a pacemaker, stand back. So that's doing this magnetic current thing is going to go through there and warm up this bearing so we can slap it on. It's going to take a bit, oh, probably a minute or so to get it up to temperature. And what we're doing is we're expanding the battery. We're expand, expanding the bearing so it slides on the shaft easier. You don't have to have one of these, $2,000. But if you do, it makes life easy. If not, you can cold press them on. And I don't recommend hammering them. And I don't recommend propane torches. So there's different ways of heating a bearing. You can figure that out for yourself. It's just starting to get warm to the touch. Anyway, I'll concentrate on that and get her on the shaft. Well, that didn't go as planned, so we are doing the next best thing. And that's in a press. It's not taking very much force at all. Put this bearing on. Let's get in there close. So just a quick recap, what happened was when I had it on the induction heater, uh, I was a little bit too frugal, I didn't give her enough heat and it started and of course it cooled off and it stopped. So I stuck her in the press and the only reason why I didn't use a press in the first place, okay, it was lightly seated, <coughs> what do we got here? Ah, what about a ton of force? There we go. That's done. So, shot press. Way less uh, money than the induction heater and way more versatile. So, and like I said, the only reason why I didn't do this in the first place is this is friggin' heavy. And I didn't want to be hauling it around, so I... I can usually do the motors uh, in the in the stators as long as you're careful don't beat them up too much but it didn't work out that way so this is what we ended up doing so uh, open bearing open side of the shielded bearing to uh, to the, the bell housings and shielded side to the to the inside of the motor and that's the way we like to set them up. Okay, let's get this thing back over into into its housing. Hey, do not, I repeat, do not forget the wavy washer. Goes in the non-drive end. Up against the bearing. Don't leave it out. Don't leave it out. The funnel for the air cooling air, that goes in there. And quick hint, tip, this is the data plate on the motor. There's your bearings. Drive in is a 6309. Now they didn't put in any of the suffixes on there and we went with ZZ. Uh, where's the bearing number? 6308-2Z, C3, so that's a 6308 with a shield on both ends. C3 clearance, SKF bearing. The 6308 is for the not for the drive, non-drive end. Uh oh, there's a mistake. Wrong bearing. We'll be back. And just like that, proper bearings on there. Uh, 6308, 60, 60, 6308, 6208 is mixed up on the shelf. That's what created the problem. Problem solved. We got it done. She's on. This one flew right on, so we'll continue on putting the end bells on. End bell on its way on. Um, don't strike these. I use a dead blow. And 
uh, you can see what I'm after. These were the witness marks for disassembly. And we're going to reassemble it with those. So let me, I can't do this one handed, so I'm going to put the hand, the camera down and I'm going to get these two end bells in. All right, all back together. Witness marks lined up. Bolts are all through. Lifting lugs are in place. Um, I'm gonna do the tightening sequence. I don't have a torque, so I'm just gonna run these up. Uh, kind of what I feel is good. Motor does turn nicely. Growl's gone, doesn't growl anymore. Well, that's kind of the important thing. So let me get this torqued up. And this was almost real time other than uh, I think about probably four or five minutes to do this job. So again, this is a uh, 15 horse motor. That's about it for the arm for the uh, uh, the rotors. That's getting a little bit heavy. And uh, this is a heavy motor. Uh, all put together. I don't know if we have a weight on this. No, it doesn't appear to be a weight. Sometimes it'll tell you on the plate how much it weighs. And sometimes it won't. No. I'm not an electrician, but here we go. So this is your horsepower. Frame size. Amps at full load. It's run 1765. It's a 254T frame. That's this frame size. Uh, NEMA says that they all should be this size for that designation so that you can swap motors out uh, kind of like like for like uh, service factor is 1.15 it's designed to run at 60 hertz to give you that speed uh, nominal efficiency is 93 percent efficient um, it is, says it is usable at 208 whatever that means don't know uh, again there's your two bearings it's inverter ready so that means that it should have j class insulation I think it's J. No, it's Class F. So this has Class F insulation. And you can run it from 30 to 60 hertz. For a 2 to 1, I think. That's slower. And then 3 to 60 hertz. I'm not sure about that. I'm not like I said, I'm not an electrician. But I do know this will this is run off an inverter. Um so there, there you go. That's all I know about that. So I'm gonna wrap this video up. Some of my apprentices have asked me about rebearing, rebearing uh, um, squirrel cage motors. I think this is classed as a squirrel cage, but it's uh, this one happens to be a, uh, what do you call it, open frame drip proof because it is an OFDP, because it has an open frame and it's drip proof. If this was TEFC, it would be totally enclosed, fan cooled, but this is not. So anyway, I'm rambling on. There you go. Thanks for uh, tuning in on how to rebearing an electric motor. Very, very simple job to do. Can be done with hand tools. Don't need an induction heater. You don't even really need a press if you want to drive the bearings on. I don't recommend it, but a small, smaller frame motors, you can get away with smaller frame press or driving them on with a drift and a hammer. Not the preferred way, but it will work. Um, it'll get you out of a bind. So there you go. That's it for all, all for now, and uh, you know, have a great day.